Hey guys, Tara from UrbanSketchingWorld.com here. Welcome to day two of my seven day challenge of urban sketching at home. So check out this little uh, setup I've got going on. Um, so day two is all about sketching something that's in your cupboard. It can be your kitchen cupboard, your bathroom cupboard, even a cupboard in the garage, um, anything you want really. But as I said um, in the um, email series that I sent out, which you may not have seen, um, you know, don't get too caught up in that you know, sketching the entire contents of a cupboard, if that seems like a little bit um, daunting, then just put out some things that you're about to make for dinner, or in my case, I've put out the stuff um, I'm going to have for my breakfast smoothie, which I'm kind of getting into my uh, my smoothies for breakfast lately, so um, I've just, I thought I'd put out the things that go into it and um, sketch those. So the only reason I got the uh, chair out from the, the garden um, and put it in the kitchen like this is just so I can clip my camera to it so I can film. But you can do this just standing up and like leaning on the counter surface or whatever you want, you know, just so you can sketch comfortably. Um, I brought in this full chair just again so I can film it properly for you guys. Um, so I am actually using um, a toned watercolour sketchbook here. Um, obviously use whatever sketchbook you've got, um, you know, I'm just using the tone sketchbook because uh, I have that one and one with white paper and I'm kind of bouncing between them um, and I just thought this could be quite interesting paper to use, um, especially for the glass jar of the smoothie maker, I thought I could add in the highlights, I don't know, I just thought in my head I could see it, you know, so I was like yeah I'm going to use my tone sketchbook for this. Um, so I'm just going through and like kind of uh, sketching in with pencil. I'm actually using the pencil more than I would normally do and I don't know if this is just a confidence thing because I'm making this video and I want the sketch to be good for you guys or um, I don't know. Or maybe I, I started to sketch out the big shapes to make sure it all fits on the page okay and then I just got a bit carried away doing some details. But either way, um, you know, do as much or as little as you want with the pencil. Um, generally just try and get the big shapes in just to make sure everything fits on the page okay and get the proportions generally right um, but that's fine you know um, I'm gonna sort of get rid of some of this pencil with the kneadable eraser I do find that the kneadable eraser is the best eraser um, to use to um, use on watercolor paper because it doesn't like wreck the surface as much as just a normal like plastic eraser might do so that's why that's why I use one they're just a little bit less abrasive than a normal like white rubber or something um, so I'm just going around now with my uh, 0 0.2 fine liner and just going around um, just adding some more details I'm not um, you know, sticking to my pencil lines exactly. If I see that I might have drawn um, something a bit, you know, off or whatever, I'll then correct it with my my pen. You know, um, so I'm turning my book just to make sure I can get this sort of relatively straight lines. You know, um, just more comfortable to do that. I'm doing my best with the lettering on the packets, um, <laughs> but it's not um, it's not the best. But you know what? As long as you get like the vibe, you know, as long as you get the idea, it doesn't really matter. You know. Um, so um, I'm going to go through and just sort of draw the kind of contour lines. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm actually working from front to back. Um, I've been watching a lot of sort of Stephen Reddy's courses on Craftsy at the moment and uh, one, one thing I really picked up from him um, is kind of starting draw the foreground elements first which just makes sense really because you know you have to draw those first so that you don't draw through them by accident. Um, if you're drawing, you know, things behind them, you know, so your, your lines don't overlap. So I was just going through and drawing like the strawberries and the banana and stuff like that first and then moving back and back. There's not, not that there's a lot of layers in this sketch, it's quite flat to be honest with you, but um, yeah, I just um, wanted to point that out that um, I was drawing the, the things that are in the very front first. So now I've got my pen sketch, I'm going to move on to uh, watercolours and I am using my usual St. Petersburg White Knights watercolours. Um, I really need to clean the tin or the, the palettes on this uh, this uh, set. I think I've, I don't think I've cleaned it for so long and I just kind of find any little white space that I can possibly use and mix on that or yeah I don't know I need to clean it 
just what's wrong with me. Um, so I've got my Rosemary & Co brush and this is Skoda number no. 6. To be honest, I do most of this sketch with the Rosemary & Co. Just find it such a convenient brush because it's got the dagger shape, it's got the point for any fine details and I can get quite a nice um, you know, straight edge and there's a lot of, because this is a sketch of man-made sort of objects, you know, there's a lot of straight edges and I'm trying to be a bit neater and stuff like that. Um, whereas if I was painting something a bit looser and a bit more organic, then, you know, I'd probably, I'd go for a bigger brush and like a round brush is fine, you know, that kind of thing. So this, this brush is better for like a tight illustration, like this kind of thing. Um, I was looking at this sketch when I was doing it and I was like, yeah, you know, it is quite like a tight sketch. Um, but then I was thinking about it, I was like, I'm just not even sure how I would approach this in like a loose manner. But then I thought it might be really cool if on the facing page where I've got my paint sitting on right now, I do the same sketch and try it in, try and do like a really loose one. I don't even know how that would work to be honest, but um, watch this space. I might do that. I might do that at some stage. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, so I'm trying to um, focus on the base of that smoothie maker is like very shiny kind of like goldy kind of chrome color um, which is kind of handy with this toned paper um, so I'm just trying to like let it breathe a bit and get really look at like where the reflections are um, and you'll see that come together a bit more um, later. The only thing I've really changed in the sketch is that protein um, pot on the right hand side I made the label green I don't really know why I did that I just thought it would look better um, so I don't know why I changed that but hey it's your sketch you know yeah it's an urban sketch but it's your sketch too you can you artistic license you know that's fine um and I didn't really draw the jungle oats quite exactly how it is in real life as well otherwise it would just get too fiddly and like um uh too all over the place but you know I think the idea is just to capture the story like this is my morning breakfast you know this is what I'm going to be making and yeah I've kind of positioned it a bit as you would maybe more of a still life but Again, the whole idea of this challenge, guys, is just to um, give you a bit of inspiration, just to make you realise, really, that you can sketch whatever around the house and that you don't, um, you know, need to go outside and go somewhere crazy or go travelling or whatever to urban sketch. You can do it right here in your home. You can practice um, sketching from life, um, trying to capture a story, trying to capture things quickly. Um, the more you know your supplies and your tools the quicker you will be able to use them effectively out um, in the world when you're sketching as well. So in my mind, I'm always like, I'm always practicing at home just because so I know that when I'm out and about, I have more confidence to try and nail the scene that I want to sketch. So I'm just going in now with a white gel pen. I'm not really f like finished as such, but sometimes I find adding highlights a bit sooner than later can kind of inspire me a bit more to carry on with the sketch and or like get an idea of what it needs and stuff like that. Sometimes I just like to see the, the highlights in there because <laughs> um, it's the fun bit and I don't like waiting right to the end, you know. Um, so I was using the white gel pen but then I switched to this white Posca marker which is definitely much better to cover like larger and more solid areas. Um, you just have to be careful with the Posca because it can sometimes if you like pump it on the page to which I would never do on my actual sketchbook page but on a separate piece of paper um, lately it's been like splurging everywhere so just kind of be careful maybe just test it on a piece of paper before you use it on your sketchbook page um, I mean you can kind of dab it off and stuff so it's not too bad but yeah just just be careful with those pens um, and now I'm just kind of trying to add a bit of the color of the items like in the counter surface top because that counter surface top is a little bit shiny um, and I was quite happy with this effect I've never really done this before but um, I don't know, I think I saw it on a video somewhere and I was like, oh, that, that's kind of cool, adding reflections like that. Then just, they're quite subtle, but especially with banana, you can sort of see the shine in the yellow and it really does help to make that surface look quite shiny. Um, so yeah, I was, I was quite happy with that. It looked quite cool. Um, so I'm going to add some white gouache now. Um, so I'm using it on a separate palette because, again, my... Palette A is a disaster, and I need to clean it, as mentioned. Um, but also, um, if you've got white gouache kind of mixed in with your watercolors, that's quite like bad. I think it can like muddy them up quite a lot, and um, it can just kind of oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, kind of pollute your colors a bit, you know. So um, the advice I've read and heard is to just 
use white gouache on a totally separate palette. So that's why I did that here. And actually it was nicer to have the space just to actually really get, like try and get a good consistency. I'm not all that good with gouache yet, but um, definitely trying to get the right consistency is most of the battle. Um, so I've found slash heard slash read. So um, you can tell here, like some of my tiles that I'm trying to do in the background look a bit washed out and some of them are looking whiter. They, it does dry a lot lighter um, once you've put it down. So but that's fine, you know, you can just go back in and paint over it, like, until it's as white as you want it to be, so it's okay. So I was glad I put those tiles in the background, because I almost didn't. Um, but I was looking at this sketch, and I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine, you know, it's okay. I wasn't blown away by it, and that's fine, you know, it's just like a quick sketch. I say a quick sketch, it's probably took me an hour. In fact, I know it took me an hour, because I was running out of time, because I had to run out and do go to an appointment. Um, so yeah, here's the bits and bobs I was using. Obviously I have the kitchen counter as like my uh, my shelf to put everything. Um, so yeah, as I said, I was okay with this sketch, but I knew it was missing something and I knew that I could do something better with it. So I actually came back to it the next day. Um, so yeah, don't tell me off, but I was like, I want I just want to know what I can do to this to make it better. Um, and I was looking at it, and I quite like the shiny chrome base on it, and the reflections, as I mentioned, uh, are okay, and even the glass jug is not so bad. Um, but it was those tiles that were bothering me, so I kind of put, like, I used my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, and just put some lines, um, like the grout kind of lines in between the tiles. Um, and then I went in with the same pen, like the same grey, and just sort of punched it up a bit, the shadows underneath, um, to the side of bits and bobs. I think that's all that it was missing, you know, just a little bit of extra contrast, just some extra shadows here and there, um, just to give it a little bit more depth. Um, so I And I knew that, I knew that's all it needed, you know, so that's why I wanted to kind of come back to it, and I actually just wanted to show you guys, like, what what I would what I would add and what I did add, just to make it that tiny little bit more interesting, um, and give it, like, a tiny bit more depth. So again, I'm going in with a slightly darker grey now, and just, again trying to make it a bit more 3D in the tiles. Um, that is the background, so arg arguably maybe I shouldn't like give it too much, but this is pretty much all I'm doing, just to just to give those tiles a bit of an edge. I didn't do very straight lines, but that's okay, you get the idea. So I'm a bit happier with it now. Um, but yeah, do not forget to add the date to your sketch. I did this afterwards, um, because, you know, urban sketch, record of your life, all that stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed this challenge, guys, for day two. Um, if you do do this, please uh, tag Urban Sketching World over on Instagram. I would love to see what you did. And I will see you uh, tomorrow for day three of the Urban Sketching World, Urban Sketching at Home, seven-day challenge. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye.